Hi, how are you? Um, so in this video, we're just gonna take a look at some screens from a TV show that I recorded earlier and we're gonna look at the English sentences and we're gonna try to analyze those English sentences so that uh, we can learn something about English improve our understanding of English so anyway, here goes well, I was, but then I thought singing a song I wrote might impress the judges, increase the chances of winning. So the first part is, but then I thought singing a song I wrote. So a song is just a generic song. It doesn't have any characteristics to it with the um, indefinite article. But then you go, I wrote singing a song I wrote so the I wrote part makes it more specific right so that's the first thing that you should notice and then the second thing is uh, singing a song I wrote might impress the judges and then that's the end, end of the sentence and a new sentence begins increase the chances of winning so this is a separate sentence and it is related to the first sentence so singing a song I wrote might impress the judges so what is the result of that what do you intend to accomplish from that why are you impressing the judges right and then comes increase the chances of winning so that's the goal so even though they are two different sentences, they are quite related. But you have to notice that you use two different sentences for this and not just one very complicated sentence. But I live and breathe pageants. So this is a good phrase to know. You live and breathe whatever activity. In this case, pageants, but it could be something else. Maybe like, but I live and breathe studying English. Or I live and breathe drawing. I live and breathe watching TV. I think that could work. But when I made it to the finals, the subtitle there is actually a little bit wrong. There's no two, but it's actually, but when I made it to the finals. So this is a very common phrase to know, very useful phrase. Um, so you make it to the finals of some competition, right? Um, yeah. You notice this phrase used everywhere where there's a competition. I think it's really, really, really brave that you're competing in this pageant. So the first thing to notice is that really is used multiple times here for emphasis really 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 brave so this kind of thing is used in English as well uh, if you actually wrote that in like a word or something then you might say that that's not correct but this is actually what's spoken in conversational English so that's the first thing and uh, the other thing is that really really brave that you are competing in this pageant so there are two parts to this sentence one is I think it's really 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 brave and the other is you are competing in this pageant so the, the word that connects the first part with the second part um, so it's like saying I think it's really really brave that the that is like a placeholder anything any idea could go in there and what is that in this sentence it's you are competing in this pageant the phrase you are competing in this pageant is that okay so like um, maybe in your mind you can like remove the whole phrase like and think of it like this I think it's really really brave that and just end it right there but um, you usually 
to Omana and they like that, right? What is that? You want to explain that, and you can do that in the same sentence. I think it's really, really brave that you are competing in this pageant. So you are competing in this pageant is that. You are competing in this pageant. This is just a statement, right? You are competing in this pageant, and you are connecting this idea to the first idea, which is that you think it's really, really, really brave that. Okay, so the girl uh, kind of off camera says, I don't think you should get your hopes up. And the girl uh, in the shot says, I know, winning is a long shot. So there are two things here, get your hopes up. And the other one is, winning is a long shot. So with the first one, you have the verb get and the up, get up your hopes. But you don't actually say that. You have it separated, get your hopes up. So um, yeah, notice the verb get is used in a lot of things. So get your hopes up. Um, I think I'm sure you know what, what it means. I don't think you should get your hopes up. I don't think you should be so hopeful, um, so encouraged about something. And then the other girl says, I know, winning is a long shot. Something is a long shot. Winning is a, it's like a noun there, it's a gerund, right? Win is a verb, but by putting, in the, putting that into the ing form, you have a gerund, which is a noun. Winning, so you can say winning something, is a long shot. A long shot means uh, it's difficult. Like I guess in golf, um, you have like hole in one, but that's a long shot, right? I mean, it literally is a long shot. It, you are trying to um, put the golf ball in in one shot, and to do that, they would have to cover a lot of distance. So that's a long shot. It means it's very difficult to do. Doing something is a long shot. Winning is a long shot. So later on, the girl goes, I have as much chance as anyone, don't I? Um, it's a pretty simple sentence here, but maybe you notice that something is missing which is, I have as much chance as anyone has, don't I? Maybe it should be like that, but it's not. I have as much chance as anyone has. So um, yeah, the has is not there, so you should probably make note of that. Otherwise, it's a simple sentence. But, uh, so you see the format, I have as much chance as, so you have as repeated twice, as much chance as, as much something as, anyone. And I can ace those interview questions. So um, the thing is, the thing with this sentence is just the ace, the word ace. I can ace those interview questions. I can ace some questions, I can ace the test. Um, so ace is used for like tests, questions. It's a good word. Liking you was never the problem. So um, let's break it down. Liking you, but how about just liking? Liking was never the problem. So like, it's like putting the ing form, liking, to make it into a noun. So since it's a noun, you can say liking was or am, oh, sorry, not am, was or um, is. In this case, it's was. Liking was never the problem. So something, some noun, was never the problem. What is that noun? It's liking, like in the noun form. And here is more specific, liking, like who, liking you, or is it whom? Liking you was never the problem. So it's slightly more complicated with the additional information that you can put in, which is you, 
liking was never the problem liking you was never the problem but the overall structure stays the same it's noun and then you want to say something about that noun liking was something liking was never the problem you've never told me once so you notice the perfect form you have never told me once this is uh, present perfect and you notice the word once once twice three times so uh, so with the perfect form you can say once twice three times whatever right I think you've learned that so you have never told me once you have never told me um, and then you can add additional information to that like how many times once you have never told me once I mean this once here in this particular example sentence is used for like emphasis I mean you've never told me is sufficient right but just add that additional information you've never told me once to make it more you know, stand out I guess um, you've never told me once so like why are you using that perfect uh, tense well you can try like other options you never told me once which is um, I mean that's the simple past and um, the thing is that when you do that um, the present is not relevant like it's all in the past when you say that so obviously that's not what you mean you are trying to say that it's still relevant right now so that's why you say you have never told me once you have it like you own this right now um, you have never told me once and so that's the um, sorry uh, so we cover the uh, simple past and that doesn't work you never tell me once I mean that's the present and it obviously doesn't work you never tell me once so the only option is really you have never told me once if you um, reason it that way but I think the important thing with the perfect here is that um, the immediate the present is what's important um, that's why I use the have you've made it very clear here's another um, example of that perfect tense you have made it very clear so um, yeah with the have it's like you've just done it there is that meaning like you've just made it very clear uh, even though maybe that's not the case I mean that's the implied meaning you have made it very clear like this other person has just done that uh, as opposed to with the simple past you made it very clear like you don't know uh, when exactly like how far into the past we're talking about right but with the have uh, the common understanding is that um, you've just done it right now I mean I think that's the implied meaning you've made it very clear even though uh, maybe that's not exactly the case you know but we kind of understand it as um, uh, it being done just now well that's my kind of opinion you've made it very clear so you can think of it as um, this other girl just made it very clear or maybe she made it clear um, in the past not right now but you can still say you've made it very clear it just doesn't make any much of a difference either way to you um, because at present uh, the present is all that really matters right so you've made it very clear like right now
Okay, I have a descriptive video on, so this is what it says. He quickly grabs a magazine and holds it up as Andrea comes down. So he quickly grabs a magazine and holds it up as Andrea comes down. So um, the first thing is um, so you can grab a magazine and hold it up. Notice the use of the it, the pronoun to refer to the magazine. He quickly grabs a magazine, that's one idea, and holds it up. Okay, so the it is very useful, of course, because it can refer to something that's been already mentioned. It refers to the magazine. So you can grab, you can do one action, you can like grab something, a magazine, and you can state the other action that he, he, he does, holds it up in kind of um, separated fashion. Like, it's very simple, right? Grabs a magazine, that's a very simple phrase. Holds it up, that's another simple phrase. But they are combined by the word and, and with the utility of the, of the pronoun it. He quickly grabs a magazine and holds it up. And the other thing uh, to notice is as Andrea comes down. So Andrea comes down is in the same tense form as he quickly grabs. They're both uh, just simple present. Uh, the simple present is actually, you know, what is used for narrations like this. So he quickly grabs a magazine and holds it up as Andrea comes down. So the boy is doing this one thing as the woman is doing this another thing like um, that kind of like parallel activity he quickly grabs a magazine she comes down uh, you can connect you can um, uh, express this idea with the word as like so For forging my signature to join the volleyball team. So the key word here is the word forge, forging. For forging my signature to do something. Um, so when you forge something, it's like uh, you're kind of like copying it without the actual owner's permission. You're making a copy of it and um, you're presenting that as as the genuine thing, as the genuine signature. That's basically the idea. For forging my signature to join the valuable team. So you can do something to do something. This is a very extremely common pattern that you see in English with the word to. For forging my signature to join the valuable team. So that's the structure of the sentence. Forging something. You know, notice that the um, forge is in the ing form. Forging my signature. Um, yeah, you have to notice that. You have to notice that it's in the ing form. So it's like a noun there, right? Forge is turn into a like noun so you can talk about it for this for forging we put you through a lot so um, so this phrase is very common and it's very useful uh, when you put someone through a lot it means um, it means you put them like through a lot of difficulties so that's what the meaning is. Uh, we put you through a lot. Put you through a lot. I mean, it doesn't say anything about like bad things there. It's all implicit, but when you put someone through a lot, it means a lot of, you know, 
not nice things, a lot of crap, you know, like a lot of difficulties. So the word put, the verb put, um, like with get, is used uh, quite often in common phrases like this. So you have to notice that we put you through a lot. It's like putting, um, when you put something through, it's like uh, maybe you have a tunnel-like thing and you can put somebody through that tunnel from, from one opening to the other. You ready to change into your interview gown? So uh, when you change into some clothes, it means um, well. It means what it means. It means you take off your what you're wearing right now and you uh, get into the other clothes. So you change into uh, some other clothes. In this case. Uh, interview gown. Okay, so notice the verb change and into. I don't want to push it, but and then he goes on to say, Mom, I really like volleyball. So notice the word push. I don't want to push it. Means, um, well, I think you can figure out what it means. It's like you don't want to make make a big issue of it. You don't want to push things. Uh, but I want to make a point, and that point is I really love volleyball, right? I guess the mom is not. Yeah, the mom is not so enthusiastic about, not so supportive about you um, playing volleyball at school. So that's why this kid is saying I don't want to push it, but. Mom, I really, I really love volleyball. I don't love that you forged my signature. So this is a simple sentence, but I just want you to notice. I don't love that. So um, this is a similar idea as the one that I've talked about before. I don't love that. And what is that? You forged my signature. So you're combining like two different simple phrases I don't love that that is acting as like a placeholder for this other phrase containing this idea you forged my signature so forged is in the it's like in the simple past form I don't is like that's present right so you can combine those I don't love that you forged my signature in the previous example uh, I think they were the same but here they're kind of mixed. I don't love that. You forged my signature. So you forged my signature is something that happened, actually took place in the past, right? I don't love is like, that's like, um, that's what's going on. Like for, at the present, you don't love this. Like um, it's still relevant like right now. I don't love that you forged my signature. Okay, anyway, the, the point is that, yeah, you can mix those tenses. And that acts as a placeholder for those two ideas. And um, you can state them very simply. Like, I don't love is a very simple sentence. You forged my signature is another very sentence or phrase, but you use that to combine those two phrases to make a one complete sentence. I'm so proud of the man you're becoming. So this sentence has two parts to it. One is, I'm so proud of the man, and the other is, you are becoming. You can kind of notice that the word that is missing. I'm so proud of the man that you're becoming. Uh, the word that is often not explicitly stated because it just makes sense, uh, even without the that. Um, so I'm proud of the man. So I want you to notice um, the use of the definite article, the. It's not a man, a man. I'm so proud of a man you're becoming. It's not like that, right? You use the definite article, the. 
Um, the reason for that is um, you are uh, describing this man, right? I'm so proud of the man. What kind of man? The man that you are becoming. So there's a definiteness to this man. It's not a generic man, right? So that's the reason why you use the definite article, the, as opposed to indefinite article, a. Um, so you should notice that. I'm so proud of the man that you're becoming. You two are good friends, and after two days in a pageant, you just turn on her. So you two are good friends. That is um, providing the context. It, this is a fact, right? You two are good friends, and after two days in a pageant, you just turn on her. Um, so, oh yeah, the turn on somebody means um, you're kind of like betraying them. Um, you're like, uh, you were once allies, but then you just turn on this uh, other person. So it's like turning your back on this other person. So, yeah, so um, anyway, the thing to notice, you two are good friends. This is a fact, but it provides that context uh, that's uh, needed for this sentence. It sets up the context. This is the background information. You two are good friends. And after two days in a pageant, you just turn on her. So, yeah, this is how you, um, how you set things up. You first provide the, um, the information that is going to be necessary for the, uh, for the latter part of the sentence uh, that's going to make the point. The point is that you are, um, this girl is saying to the other girl that you're just turning on this uh, other girl after just two days. That's the point, right? So, but in order to make this point, you have to provide some context. Um, you two are good friends. That's the like the background information. That's the context information, and the other one is the kind of like the actual point. So this is how things are set up. Is this really who you wanna be, a boyfriend stealer? So, these are two sentences. First one is, is this really who you want to be? And then second sentence is, boyfriend stealer? This is just uh, just a single word, basically, with the article. Um, so, is this really who you want to be? So, notice that there's this, uh, this word used in the first sentence. And that this is kind of um, elaborated in the second sentence, it's like um, uh, paraphrase. It's like um, described in a different kind of uh, way. It's, it's described as this single noun, a boyfriend stealer. Is this really who you want to be, a boyfriend stealer? So um, what, is, what uh, is being done here is that um, the first sentence is kind of a uh, uh, making a kind of broad idea, like it's more broad than it's broader than the um, second sentence. The second sentence kind of uh, make things more specific. It provides more detailed information, or it can like um, describe things in a different way. So, is this really who you want to be? The question is. Um, so, there's this question, right? What is this? What is this? That question needs to be answered, right? I mean, it's natural to um, answer that question because the other person might not know like what you're talking about. Like, what is this? So you have to say, a boyfriend stealer. That's what, uh, that's what I mean, a boyfriend stealer. This means a boyfriend stealer. So, so um, these two sentences, they kind of flow naturally from one to the other. Please don't let some guy come between you and your best friend. So when a third person comes between you and somebody else that you are in sort of relationship with, any any type of relationship with, then 
this uh, third person is kind of uh, messing things up uh, for your existing relationship so yeah it's not good so please don't let some guy come between you and your best friend because otherwise you may end up losing your best friend tonight's final task the interview portion so um, the only thing here I want you to notice is the is the word portion so that's the word used um, for this kind of a thing not like interview part or interview uh, section or anything like that but interview portion portion Tori Santa Maria you're up first so when somebody's up first it means they go first uh, there are many members there but you're the first one to go and do your thing so you're up first please tell us what is your greatest flaw so just notice that this sentence um, or maybe it's two sentences but it there are two parts to it please tell us and then what is your greatest flaw you don't say something like for example please tell us what your greatest flaw is uh, I mean you could say that but notice that it's not said like that here so you should notice that please tell us what is your greatest flaw